These are the Peshastin Pinnacles, a few miles west of Wenatchee, looking further west here towards uh, some of the Cascades. Um, and it's uh, already a warm morning here at Peshastin Pinnacle State Park. Uh, wanted to share a video on these rocks and their story. Uh, kind of an interesting spot. I was hoping to do a little rock climbing here, but it's just too doggone hot <laughs> uh, already. It's uh, not even, it's about 7 a.m. and it's, it's pretty toasty already. So it's gonna be another 100 plus degree day. Uh, but let's get a look at these rocks here. Um, these are sedimentary rocks uh, that are from about 45 million years ago during the Eocene. And these big fins sticking out of the hillside here, um, again, just maybe 10 or plus miles west of Wenatchee, are part of a, a sedimentary formation called the Chumstick Formation. And it consists mainly of sandstones, conglomerates, uh, a little bit of mudstone here and there. Um, and these rocks have a story of being deposited in a, in a basin and so basins are good places for sediments to be deposited but this particular basin uh, is known as the Chewakam Graben and a Graben is a large basin bounded by faults typically normal faults so basically the faults allow the earth's crust to drop between the faults creating a low place you have highlands on either side of that low place, and so sediment is then shed into that basin and starts to fill it up. And so these, these faults were presumably active uh, again during the Eocene, and that allowed the high areas to dump sediments into the low area, which is known as the Chewakam Graben. Um, and so let's take a look at these a little more closely. I think the most important thing perhaps first of all, and I think we'll see this a little better, uh, is to note that these rocks are steeply dipping to the right, which is to the west. You can see that here with this dark band of sediments here. And if we move in a little bit closer, we can see that it's a, it's a conglomerate. It's got rounded uh, clasts or particles in it, gravel sized particles that are pretty well rounded. Uh, looks like a lot of them, well, there's a lot of lichen on it, but a lot of them look like they might be quartzites, uh, granites, uh, maybe some metamorphic gneisses as well. And then we can see a sharp contact here that it grades into a sandstone. And the sandstone here is fairly coarse grained uh, with bigger grains. There are a few places like here where there's a what we call rip-up class, little chunks of mudstone or finer grain sandstone that have been kind of ripped up and incorporated in the material. Another bed here of with bigger material conglomerate uh, as well. So this is sort of uh, poorly sorted in here where you get a mixture of sediment sizes. Um, and then as you move kind of back down, it, it grades more into this coarse grained sandstone. And so the, the depositional environment, the actual um, setting in which these most of the rocks here in the Chumstick Formation were deposited would be streams, alluvial fans, which are when you get to the bottom of the stream, all the sediment sort of spreads out in the basin. Um, and so you can imagine floods and changes in river levels being the dominant factor in determining what gets deposited, whether it's a, a conglomerate with the large particles like we see just above me here, Nice little face up there with some of these bigger gravels, um, or if it's or if it's more of this fine to core, well, really coarse sand that gets deposited. Some really nice view here of these mud rip-up clasts. So presumably there was a bed of uh, mudstone or shale that was deposited nearby, and then some uh, event, probably some sort of flood, was able to rip up and then transport those down and incorporate them in the sandstone. Um, so the Chumstick Formation, we'll see what else we can see over here. It's actually, again, I mentioned uh, uh, it's rock climbing location. You might be able to see, oh boy, right about here. It's probably hard to tell. There's a, there's a bolt on the wall uh, so you can make out that there's climbing that actually happens here. Uh, and apparently this unit is 
which is pretty hard, sticks up as pinnacles from the uh, hillside, is cemented by silica. So by having silica as the cementing agent in the rock, that allows for the rock to be much harder than it might otherwise. As I rub this with my hand, you really can't rub off any individual sand grains, maybe a couple, but it's overall it's pretty hard uh, through and through. Uh, if we work our way around to this shady side, I think we'll see a few other features as well. Let me get down this little spot here, uh, including, so now we're kind of looking a long strike. So the beds are dipping to the right, which is to the um, west. Let me work my way down this way. Steep little trails here. And what I think we'll be able to see, oh yeah, this is nice right here. Um, right up in here, you might be able to pick out that the beds are going primarily in this direction, but there's some that are sweeping across it at a slightly different angle. So those are called cross beds and cross beds form in stream systems, usually along uh, point bars or in the channel of the river. Um, as the river is moving along the sand, sometimes a little bit of pebbles and, and some small gravels as well, um, you get uh, low angle cross beds like we see here. So again, we're looking to the more or less south here and the dip is to the right or to the west. You can make out a few bigger chunks of sediment in here as well. There's one, let's see. Uh, right there, there's one larger class that's maybe about softball size. I can see some pebbles up in there as well. If we get a little bit closer, um, we can see, oh, here's a nice, here's, here's a nice granitic clast in otherwise kind of a sea of coarse grain sand. And so indicating that again, the, this is a moderate to poorly sorted unit. It has a lot of different sized particles in it. You can see all the little pebbles and chips in there. As we work our way into this bed here, a little higher energy. So these streams are fluctuating in terms of how much um, sediment or the sediment size they can carry. Bigger floods, more energy, carrying more material. Right here we have kind of a, a recess. So there's actually a place where it's, the rock is kind of eroded back. And I would assume that's because, yeah, this stuff is a little bit softer. So not as much rock climbing going on here. This stuff's really crumbly. And it looks like down here, it might have more layering to it. And with more layering, this might be more of a, a mudstone or something like that. So it has a finer green material back into the sandstone with the pebbles in them as well. Um, I think... I think that's probably a good summary here of the Peshastan Pinnacles. Um, it's just kind of pretty in the morning light there. Kind of this gray material here. Uh, I think a lot of this material was probably eroded from um, a lot of the granitic rock and the intrusive rock in the area. So without looking at it super closely with the hand lens, I would expect this to have not just quartz, but some feldspar in it as well. Because the source of the sediment is so close by, these sand grains um, are probably somewhat angular. Some of them might be a little bit rounded, but there's probably some angularity to them as well. So the Peshastan Pinnacles, a state park in uh, this part of Washington, a nice little scenic attraction above Highway 2, an area east of the Cascades, and an area with a really awesome geologic history where we deposit sediment in this basin and then later these sediments uh, get tilted to this very steep angle of about uh, 60 or so degrees um, forming these big fins of sandstone and conglomerate that rise out of the hillside here in Wenatchee in central Washington.